Today on the newscast, Israel strikes near the Syrian capital of Damascus, and Syria responds. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. Some breaking news overnight out of the Middle East. Israel reportedly carried out airstrikes near the Syrian capital of Damascus, targeting weapons development centers used by Iran-backed militias. Now, the Syrian military responded, as usual, with surface-to-air missiles. An interesting part of this story is that one of those Syrian missiles landed or exploded over the Mediterranean Sea off of the Israeli coastline, and the debris from that Syrian missile actually fell, some of the debris, in South Tel Aviv. We'll have more on that in a minute, but let's look at the broader picture here. Number one, obviously, as we've told you many times here on the newscast, Israel has carried out probably at this point hundreds in the high hundreds of airstrikes in Syria over the past several years, targeting in specific Iranian-backed militias, Hezbollah, weapons depots, weapons development centers like were reportedly hit last night, and of course, the main target of these Israeli airstrikes are those precision-guided missiles, PGMs for short. Now, they are a major game changer, a red line that Israel will not allow Iran and Hezbollah and their various radical allies in Syria to cross. Uh, the PGMs are shipped, or Iran attempts to ship the PGMs to Hezbollah through Syria. Now, they're not shipping usually uh, entire missiles intact. What they are doing now to try and evade Israeli surveillance and intelligence is they are sending parts to these PGMs that can later be assembled in southern Lebanon by Hezbollah. Again, Israel says no way because those precision guided munitions do exactly what their name says. They hit the target with accuracy, with precision. Again, red line for Israel. Speaking of these surface-to-air missiles kind of going awry like happened last night, a few months ago, back in May, we saw, again, Israeli airstrikes against Iranian targets in Syria. We saw the Syrian military respond, and one of those surface-to-air missiles traveled all the way from Syria near the Golan border to really towards the southern half of Israel in the Negev desert and fell only about 18 miles from Israel's nuclear reactor in Dimona. Now you might say 18 miles, that is, a, that is far away, but hey, too close for comfort, I think, when we're talking about a nuclear reactor. And folks, that's why I say once again that the region is a tinderbox, even a mistake. Uh, imagine, God forbid, if that Syrian surface-to-air missile hit Demona or fell on Tel Aviv last night rather than uh, off of the coast of Tel Aviv, you could spark, or it, that incident could spark a major regional war, uh, even a mistake, again, a miscalculation of sorts, and we could be looking at the onset of that great northern war that we know is coming and that we've talked about so much here on the newscast uh, again. Israel will not allow Iran, its proxies, Hezbollah, to acquire precision-guided missiles at Israel's doorstep. Israel will not allow Iran to set up a permanent base again at its doorstep. So you will see these airstrikes continue, in my view. And if you've noticed, these airstrikes began under Prime Minister Netanyahu, but they have continued under the new Israeli government led by Naftali Bennett. There is really no daylight among Israel's various political factions when it comes to preventing Iran from setting up a beachhead at Israel's doorstep. We've talked so much about that ring of fire that the Iranian regime is attempting to encircle Israel with. Of course, Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza to the south, the Houthis in Yemen also to Israel's south, Hezbollah, of course, to the north, those Iraqi Shia militias to the east, all armed to the teeth with rockets, missiles, and attack drones. But what about the Assad regime in Syria? Look, Assad is basically an Iranian client right now without the help of the Iranian regime and, of course, the intervention of Russia almost six years ago now. Wow, September 2015, 
Assad very likely would have lost the Syrian civil war. He was on the ropes big time, even with Iranian and Hezbollah, heavy Iranian and Hezbollah assistance. They had to call in the biggest guns. In their view, Russia, Qasem Soleimani, the not so dearly departed Iranian terror master, actually traveled to Moscow twice to lobby the regime of Vladimir Putin to get involved in Syria. That's exactly what happened. So Assad survived and, of course, has the upper hand right now. But we have Russia. We have Iran. We have Turkey also. Some of the world's worst actors setting up shop in Syria right now at Israel's doorstep. And when it comes to that ring of fire, a big question I have is, will Assad also be part? Look, Syria has a pretty robust missile program, to say the least. Will the Assad regime? also be involved in that ring of fire surrounding Israel. It looks like a pretty safe bet. And when we're talking Damascus and we talk about airstrikes near Damascus right away, many people will mention in our comments, hey, what about Isaiah 17? The book of Isaiah chapter 17 says that a day is coming. And I take no joy in saying this. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. A day is coming when Damascus will cease to be a city it will become a ruinous heap. Now, that's what Isaiah says in the book of Isaiah. Again, chapter 17, you can check it out. Hey, look, in world history, and Damascus is one of the world's oldest inhabited cities, never has Damascus been completely destroyed. Even the Mongols did not raise Damascus completely to the ground. But the Bible is very clear that a day is coming when that will happen. And again, we talk about the smallest miscalculation setting off a larger regional war and unforeseen consequences. I think of that when I look at Isaiah 17, but I don't want to end on that note. I want to take you into the weekend with a note of encouragement. Flip through uh, a little bit forward from Isaiah 17, and you have Isaiah 19. I strongly encourage you to check it out over the weekend, over your Labor Day weekend. There are prophecies there about Egypt, but this one really sticks out. Towards the end of Isaiah 19, it says, A day is coming where there will be a highway running from Assyria through Israel on to Egypt, and the Assyrians, the Egyptians, and Israel will be united under the Lord your God. It's really uh, an amazing verse. When we think of Assyria, we think of parts of northern Iraq and Syria, even parts of Turkey. But from Assyria through Israel on to Egypt, you will have this highway. Amazing. And there will be peace, but only, only when the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus, comes. Check it out this weekend. Some very good Bible study for you. Hey, thanks for joining us this week here on The Watchman. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.